everybody, welcome to the Wild Dog Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be a homeschool show and tell. The homeschool show and tell is an open collaboration hosted by Abby from Rooted and Rest and myself. Our goal with the homeschool show and tell was really just to show that there's not one right way to homeschool. And we do that by bringing homeschoolers together from around the globe to share their specific take on a different topic each and every month. This month's topic is homeschool reflections. So we're all going to be reflecting on how our homeschool year went. So make sure you check out the playlist in the description to watch all the videos. So I am actually going to be reflecting on our 2023, 2024, sixth grade homeschool year. In case you don't remember what I said, our curriculum picks were, or what I had said our plans were for each season. I will link that playlist right here so you can review it. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't go review them and this year didn't go at all as planned. So we're just going to have a transparent, really honest chat about how it did go. Um, Emily is going to be 12 in a few months. We have definitely hit the tween years. And while I was prepared for tween and transition was well, prepared as you can be on a personal level, I was not prepared for how that was going to affect our homeschool. And I did not take any of it into account. Um, I did all of the things I thought you were supposed to do, like, you know, read all of the, my emotions and, um, how my body's changing and all of that with Emily. But I still, like I said, didn't take into effect how it was going to affect our school, homeschool. Like I just didn't take it into account and I wasn't prepared for it. So all of my plans and all of my big things and all of my big ideas kind of while they still happened to a degree, they did not happen the way I thought they would happen because a lot of our year was spent focusing on the transitions that you go through as a tween, hormonally, emotionally, mentally. And I'm in hindsight, 100% okay with that because I think that was so much more important than anything that could have happened academically this year. Um, the changes that she's going through physically, mentally, emotionally are drastic. Um, also, we have yet to sink, so it means that we are having a lot of emotions and hormones at a lot of times in our household, uh, which made homeschooling even more interesting, to say the least. And we just kind of went with the flow, for lack of a better word. Um, our one big thing was supposed to be nature study. That happened, but it didn't happen in the way that I had hoped that it would or the way I had said that it would. Um, it happened a lot more on the archery range. That really ended up becoming our family's one big thing, um, kind of by accident. And I got back into archery 4-H. My dad is really big into it. So their relationship has come full circle and he's been able to participate and help her and coach her. He's been able to help Kevin and I get into it and help us become better archers. Um, and then we just kind of spent the year traveling to different archery shoots all over the state. And while on the range, we, um, cause a lot of our shoots are in the woods, 3d have become our favorite. We found all kinds of interesting things like snake skins and bird feathers and skulls, which yes, were the weird homeschoolers that collected those, um, and different types of leaves and different types of plants that maybe we don't have where we're from. And so our nature study became a lot of like taking pictures or talking about it. Um, and between my dad and Kevin, they're wealth of knowledge on all things. So they could say like, oh, that's that plant or, oh, that's the feather from this bird or, and um, that's that bird call or whatever. And they really took the reins kind of on nature study more um, in action as it was happening versus all of the wonderful, really cool plants that I thought I had. And in the end, it ended up being so much better. Um, I will say that our sixth grade homeschool year really became more about connection over curriculum. That's always been something I've prided ourselves on, but this year more than ever, like I really had to take a step back and put kind of like my money where my mouth is and say to myself over and over again, like you pride yourself on connection before curriculum. And so I had to let go of a lot of things and be okay with the connection and making sure that we were connecting on a mental, emotional, you know, and physical level and dealing with the hormones and all of that stuff that were at hand when they were at hand. Um, and being okay with saying like <laughs> you doing a math lesson today or us doing any kind of lesson today is really going to hurt our relationship. <laughs> so we should just walk away. Um, she did make it through her teaching textbooks, math. Um, 
she does that independently. The discovery decks that we added were huge because it meant that even when she couldn't handle maybe a lesson, she could get five minutes of educational learning by watching a video with or without me. Um, we didn't read nearly as much as I would have liked. We didn't play nearly as many games as I would have liked. But I will say the one thing that the tween years in sixth grade um, has taught me is that the conversations that you have, like seriously, I went back to start putting Emily's portfolio together and I was like, this just doesn't represent like the physical evidence of our homeschool year is so minuscule compared to like what I know we actually did together because the conversations that we had, like when you want to talk about big juicy conversations, like when you have a tween, like they start happening in a way that is just like, I can't, I can't even explain it. It's amazing. And the conversations weren't, weren't even always during like homeschool times, ten, nine times out of 10, they're when I'm ready to go to bed and I'm falling asleep and she all of a sudden needs to talk for two hours, which is absolutely fine. I've tried really, really hard to wake up and rally and be okay with that. Cause it seems like that's when she has the most epiphanies and the most amazing conversations. Um, when we did exploration unit study, it was so funny because she's like in the middle of the night, mom, what is the difference in a pirate and an explorer? Because as far as I can tell, they were both kind of like scoundrels who were after treasure and plundered for it. And we had this huge long discussion about it and we did tons of research about it. And I mean, really in the end, we kind of decided that explorers were essentially pirates on land and pirates were essentially explorers at sea. Like they really were the same. One just did it on land and one just did it at sea. Anyway, but seriously, like in the car conversations, midnight conversations, um, pausing movies to have conversations like those I can't quantify, but I would say that ended up becoming like the backbone of all of our education this year because they were just so deep um, and meaningful. And honestly, I can't wait to see how that continues to evolve as she gets older and goes from tweens to teens and, you know, even into adulthood. Um, we did have a lot of homeschool favorites from this year, not as many in the, as in the past, because like I said, there wasn't as much physical things. And I will share those favorites with you from our 2023, 2024 homeschool year next week on a YouTube video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, but that's, that's really it. I mean, one of our favorite memories, I think from the year is probably our cross country road trip where we were gone for a month and we did eight national parks. Um, I will say the one thing that I had to like really make a point of doing this year that I've never had to do in the past is she would always seek us out. Like, mom, will you read aloud to me? Mom, will you play a game with me? Mom, will you do this? Because she's an only child and she was bored. She would like want us to fill her time. Whereas I've seen her struggle with the, like, I'm getting older. I should be more independent. I shouldn't need or want, or maybe she doesn't even know what she needs or want. And so she struggles to verbalize it where she, she didn't before. And so I've had to seek her out more. Um, and even when I've thought like, she's, she's just growing up. She doesn't want me to read aloud to her anymore. She doesn't want to play games with me. Like she used to, like when I take the time to seek her out and ask like, Hey, do you want to do this? Even if she's being like too cool for school and like, doesn't act like it in the end, she'll be like, Hey mom, thanks for playing that game with me. Or Hey mom, thanks for reading aloud to me. So I've also seen more than ever that it is so important to still continue to do the things with her as a teenager that I did with her as a little kid. Um, even though it may not always seem like she enjoys it as much as she did then in the moment, it means even more to her now than it did then. Like it makes a bigger impact and it matters. So I'm having to remind myself more to like seek her out and make a mental note to me to be like, Hey, have you read to her today? Hey, have you played a game with her today? Have you connected with her on some level? Because we do that so much more when they're little and it seems like it just becomes not harder, but less in our faces as they get older because we're, they're striving to be more independent and we're striving for them to be more independent. And sometimes we, we, we get lost. That gets lost in the transition and the shuffle that like they still need us as much as they did then. 
um, and we still need to do that as much. So that's been something that I'm working on is still meeting her where she's at, still inviting her into those opportunities and those connections with me. Um, and still making learning as fun as possible. Like it's so, it would be so easy for me to throw some independent work on at her, literally, like here's your stuff, get it done and walk away. Um, because it's easier when they're older, right? Like making learning fun and hands-on is so, so easy when they're little and throwing independent work is so much easier when they're older. So that's another thing that I'm like making sure that I'm having fun resources for her, like the discovery decks, like, Hey, here's a four or five minute video that you can watch about all these different topics that she enjoys. Like, Hey, let's play some games together. Hey, let's do a unit study that you're absolutely going to love like spy Academy. Um, and let's do it together. Not just me throwing independent work at her. Like let's still have that connection and that fun together as a family in our homeschool. So that is something that I am working on and I will continue to work on as she gets older and, you know, continues to make me feel like she's too cool for me some days. Okay. That is my very, very chatty homeschool reflection on our sixth grade, 2023 homeschool year. Um, it looked nothing like what I planned, but it was still really great in its own way. It had a lot of different transitions and some ups and downs. Um, and it became a lot more about emotional regulation than it did academics in the end. Um, but I wouldn't change any of that.